Yo, what is up everybody? Zanzibic Kid here, back again with another new Hitalia fan game made by myself. And this was for the Hetophobia game jam that ended this year, so yeah, this is Bioterror. And let's see, I worked on this for about two months, I think? Well, I spent one month actually coding it, or at least I had one month. Yeah, this is actually a project that I have thought of since like pretty much a long while beforehand. And Miss Ertaku, she had this Hetophobia game jam come up, which was specifically meant for horror games and you have to pick a certain phobia to go off of. And yeah, I chose necrophobia, uh, the fear of the dead, or fear of corpses and stuff. So yeah, and yeah, I thought this was a good opportunity to get this idea running. So we've got the Benelux. They're a group of siblings that I really like. Well, I'm interested in them and their dynamic, but they haven't been explored that much in Italia fan games. Well, maybe Netherlands had a few. And I think Belgium appeared a bit too, but I haven't seen much of Luxembourg, if at all. But seeing these three here in this sort of setting, crazy, right? So this title screen, I guess I might have spent like one day or two working on it. I sketched it out in the thumbnail first, and then I did the actual sketch, and then I colored it in. And yeah, I had this image of like the biohazard symbol in the back. With um, just three ominous silhouettes of the Venelux holding weapons as if they're about to. It's about to go down. And the font is actually, I think, a Resident Evil 4 font. The cloud effect was really just like a different touch because I wanted to add some movement. Sorry, I just talk so much over here on this tile screen. All right, let's begin. Yeah. Okay, so that sound effect, that was actually me. <laughs> and I put in Adobe Audition. I modified it a bit with like some reverbs and maybe pitched it down to make it sound spookier with an extra sound effect in the background. You know, it's just like this is supposed to be a Resident Evil inspired game. And the Resident Evil games always had, like, at least the old ones always had this, like, spooky sound effect saying, Resident Evil. Right when you press play on the title screen. Resident Evil. Resident Evil. Two. Resident Evil. Three. And yeah, this game is called Bioterror because, dear, as some people picked up, Resident Evil in Japan is actually called biohazard. There is such a term as bioterrorism. So yeah, I thought this would it would be a spooky title with some good meaning. So before we begin, pick the character you want to play as. Use the arrow keys to move the pointer and press the space bar to learn more about each of the siblings. Hold the QT to skip text. Okay. I did kind of want to change this up a bit. There are a few graphics I'd like to change in newer versions, but yeah, this is fine. I actually colored all of these these three face sets from like in from my initial sketches of how the characters would look. Gosh, did I fuck up again? Okay. <laughs> Netherlands. Human name Lars Abelson. Physical age 25. Blood type O negative. One blood type that's a universal donor. I just thought it'd be kind of funny if <laughs> If Ned was the one with it, because then he could use the fact that his blood is very useful to his advantage if it comes to business. I don't know. So the oldest of the siblings, Netherlands, is a solemn neat freak whose resourcefulness gets him ahead. Gameplay is action quick time effects, events, and setting traps. And his weapons is a revolver. So he has good health. His sprinting is shit, though. And he has alright weapon damage. Luxembourg, human name Henry Van Stein, I think. 
physical age 20 blood type a plus actually his human name that's from another hitali fan game devs headcanon tsukiko ayanosuke she's one of the devs that worked on an ing Ita game about when they were kids uh as well as Hitali King of the Triad. And recently she made Little Savior of Blue come light your torch. And also, they were also another participant in the Hetophobia game jam. So yeah, I decided to use that headcanon because I liked it. So the youngest of the siblings, Luxembourg, is polite and proper and well versed in business skills. Although he has little interest in violence, his wits are useful in getting him by. Gameplay is stealth section, lockpicking quick time events, and his weapons are throwing knives, so he has shit health, great stamina, okay weapon damage. So this is Belgium, human name Emma Beaumont, physical age 23, blood type AB negative, which is actually the rarest blood type. Um why it's relevant? Well, you're just gonna have to wait till future updates. Anyways, the middle child, Belgium, is a mature, caring, sisterly type of person. She's much stronger than she gives herself credit for. And her gameplay includes time choice and marksmanship, and her weapons are precision rifle. She has shit health, okay stamina, great weapon damage. Yeah, these are the three... A major reason why this sort of game idea came into fruition was because I was watching a review of the old version of Resident Evil 2. And in it, you were able to either play as one of two protagonists first and the other second. And depending on who you pick, the, I don't know, the sort of scenario and puzzles that they have to go through are are actually pretty different. The, the main antagonist that each would have to face is vastly different and like I guess what happens in regards to them interacting with their own each of their supporting characters is different so I wanted to reflect that here and then bringing it up even more of a notch by giving them each their own custom play styles which I wasn't able to implement in this version unfortunately but I want to in future updates. I think first I'm going to play as Luxembourg and then later on the other two. So just know that huge meat of my commentary might be in his route once you start choosing. So I'll leave it up for you all to decide. So first, we are going with Luxembourg. Pick Luxembourg as your player character? Yeah. Evening, July 20XX, aboard a train to the Gare du Nord. That is a train station in Paris, France. How do I know? I googled. Ugh. I should be done with this soon. Yeah, I forgot what voice I gave him. <laughs> At least in King of the Triad, so... Hooray, new voice, Luxie! I'm sitting here with my family, but here I am. Just typing away on my work laptop. Yeah. Alright, just a few last minute revisions over here and there. Add the attachments to the email. Make sure it's my work email. I would not want to face the embarrassment of sending it via fluffydoggo623 at headtomail.com. <laughs> yeah, um, his personal email name. Fluffy Dog's obviously referring to his pet. 0623 is actually his birthday. <laughs> and done! Was that document emailed? My boss should be fine. I'm free! Yeah. Thing is, dude is just so busy all the time. 
he he had to miss like one Italia Halloween event in Himaruya's comics. But then he made the next one, dressed as a scary wolf suit. <laughs> ah, look at you! My little brother is such a hard worker. I'm so proud. No. <laughs> She dotes on me like a little kid. <laughs> so to be honest, it's the first time we've got to have a vacation together in a while. After having to stay in for the last Halloween again, the workload's been driving me crazy. I keep telling you, you should delegate tasks and take some more time for yourself. I doubt that the best business decisions could be made if you're running yourself into the ground. Big sister, I'm fine. No need to worry. Besides, we need you to show the way to your neighbor's best destinations in not only Paris, but also the countryside. I don't know why I give them all French accents. It's just at least two of them speak French as an official language, I guess, so that's why. Of course. I made sure to research ahead of time to find places that the two of you would like. Don't know in Netherlands, he's likely tried to spell... I keep saying spell instead of sell. My mouth isn't working properly. He'd likely try to sell expensive products to France again. Hmm. We were just wondering what you think of this trip, big brother. So, if you do look at their table, Belgium's got like a plate of waffles. Lux has got his laptop and tea. Ned's got, I don't know what Ned's got, a cup of water. That sounds like something he'd do. He's like, yeah, this this cup of water is fine. Me? I think it'll be nice. I'll get to see what commodities are trending in France right now. <laughs> By the look on their face, Belgium's getting worried about Netherlands' stinginess. Better change the subject! <laughs> So, from what I see, Lux, he's sort of, I don't know, playful with Belgium. At least he, he pranked her that one time. And with Netherlands, he looks up to him. So, I guess while the, his older two siblings are more prone to bickering, he's like in a good place. So he's like the bridge between them, if he can be. By the way, why are you texting? This is all just speculation, by the way. The younger two eagerly look at Netherlands' phone screen and see a picture of Japan taking a selfie of himself alongside Pochi and Netherlands' rabbit. Ah, that's so adorable! Seeing this reminds me of my own dog. Oh, sweet pollutes. Ah, sweet dog. You must be missing your rabbit already. I just wanted to see if Japan's adjusting well to caring for both his dog and Miffy. You are too much. I'm sure that Miffy will be just fine. Speaking of photos, I have a new Polaroid camera. We should take a picture of ourselves. Yeah, asterisks are... Because lol, copyrighted stuff. Our phones already have built-in cameras that work just fine. Why would you spend extra money on another camera? There's a difference between just fine and the best quality possible. Besides... Add some money, and there will be instant photos right away. We could put them in an album once we are done. It is for the aesthetic. The aesthetic. <laughs> oh, great idea. Luxembourg, Netherlands, both are super business and money oriented. While Netherlands is, you know, he's really stingy, especially stemming from his own childhood. He was poor, he had to work hard to become rich. Well, Luxembourg, well, he didn't have as much experience in that realm, just like, I mean, yes, he's had hardships, but, but he had his big brother to look up to, to, as a beacon, so I guess he'd be more like, he'd be less stingy, just more like, oh yeah, I gotta get the best products, you know the best quality, and money can get that. Oh, great idea! I could take a picture of the three of you if you'd like. Really? That would be great! 
Smile for the camera. That means you too, Ned. Really? <laughs> Yay! Did it come out okay? Okay, this image. This was drawn during what the last couple weeks of the jam. So yeah, I was really cramming in my efforts there. <laughs> that is more than amazing. Thank you very much. <laughs> Ned, you should keep it. I thought you would have wanted it. Yeah, but you are neat and organized. You hardly misplace anything, if at all. If you really want me to. Okay. <laughs> As Ned is going to talk about the bathroom, I'll just say this here. I actually went on Google, looked up the type of train that I was basing this on that actually travels between the station in Amsterdam all the way to the Gare du Nord. I forgot what it was called. I'm gonna look up my notes. Oh, the tallest train? The tallest train? From Amsterdam Central Station. Yeah, that's what it was called. I actually looked up pictures of the inside the carts of those trains and tried replicating the look as best as I could with an RPG Maker tile sets. The restroom's two carts ahead, right? Yes, it should be. Alright. See ya. Nature calls, am I right? <laughs> Belgium and Luxembourg continued to chat about multiple topics while waiting for their brother's return. So, like, this thing happened and this, this other thing happened. And then, OMG, you can't believe what France did last week. He freaking- No, I'm kidding. Uh, he's been taking a while. It is likely his business, not ours. Maybe, but still. Let's just check up on him for a bit. I'll be back soon. She's just gonna interrupt her brother's business. <laughs> just knocking on the door. Very well. Okay. Makes this worries too much sometimes. Hmm? My boss just texted me. Was there a mistake in one of my documents? Luxembourg, are you and the other two with each other right now? Why ask that question? I don't know, maybe he wants to enter a Zoom chat with you all. <laughs> yes, we are on the train. Okay. It'd be in your best interest if you stay close by your siblings. When you get to Paris. Or Paris. I, don't, I got to pick one freaking pronunciation stick with it. Find a safe place to stay in and then survive. Survive? What are you talking about? You didn't hear the news? What news? Yeah, big red flag. Gasp. Luxembourg opens the link that his boss sent, at least to an article on the internet. It's headline saying, Disease outbreak in Finnish town reanimates the dead. So yeah, some of you are probably wondering, Why Finland of all places? Well, my I already had the idea of a zombie apocalypse AU, except that was like, like years ago? Except it was starring the Nordics. And it would involve the Nordics going to one of Finland's towns for like one cool, one fun like family outing. Except the town happens to end up getting infected. Oops. <laughs> what? Am I reading this correctly? Does my boss really think that I'm the type to be fooled with an obvious hoax as this? This is fake it has to be. Yeah, Luxembourg, he'd, I mean, he'd have some sense, of course. And he's, like, pretty technology-forward. At least I think he'd... Right. Oh, shit. <laughs> that sounded like... Bell! Should I go and see what's going on? What if it's an overreaction? Oh, forget pondering, I need to help! Ooh. 
She just freaking flew in. What happened? There's dangerous people back there. Absolutely no one should go through this door. Oh no! Oh shit! My theory may be nonsensical, but... It wouldn't happen to have anything to do with this, would it? Luxembourg pulls out his phone, the screen showing Netherlands and Belgium the news article. I don't want to admit it, but maybe... Hmm. Zombos. Oh, yep. It's train to Busan, baby! Uh, oh, God! Yep, here we go. <laughs> here comes the plot. Not good. We need to leave the train! It's this way! Okay. So, thing is, um... Yes, I... You can get knocked back if you accidentally touch a zombie also. Yes. Sucks to be those people. Okay, the door opening thing, that's homage to Resident Evil 2. As well. Then what is this? I guess it's as good as yours. So if, if you run into the zombies, they won't actually hurt you. That would be a major dick move. Especially since you can't save. I just... Like, they can knock you back as part of, like, the freaking drama. No matter where we go, there's a small of them. There's to be an exit somewhere. How could you be so calm about this? There's a time and a place to freak out. I have to make sure you're both safe. So, yeah. Um. Designing these maps was a trip. And, yeah. What the? Since when did everything catch on fire? Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, God. You bitches need to get out of the fucking way. And yes, I- You know, you can never have too much fire when everything goes to shit. Things are getting worse. Is there any hope left? Focus, you two. We're almost out. Okay. So yeah. I was like thinking, oh yeah, it just- It's gonna get more bloody and more full of destruction and fire the further you go down. And like- when the doors open, it just gets more and more distorted to show that, yes, everything is going to shit. Yeah. <laughs> cray cray. So this, um, I don't know, this caused a bunch of grief. Because there was something I wanted to do in the scene, but wasn't able to because, I don't know. So the background is a parallax map that is set to loop and the train is actually the the map layer at work with events of course Will i make it to the other side it's better than going back there hurry mm. lux you go next i haven't made a risky jump like this before well, today's a new experience Stop bickering and just jump, you two! Uh, Look, so go first and help you over. Okay, baby bro. You can do this. You can hop across. Just use your little baby steps and hop. <laughs> Alright, I can do this. Oh, nope. Luxembourg! No! <laughs> Netherlands! Belgium! I'll come back, don't worry. So, yeah, it was an evening on July 20xx when dreams ended and the nightmare began. Bio terror! <laughs> Yay! You started the plot! Congrats!
Yeah, that music was from Silent Hill. Um, running through the train music was from 28 Days Later. And it played through a ring like a pretty tense scene. Anyway, have this train crashing ASMR. <laughs> Oh. Okay. Mm. Feels like I got run over by a train. That I think about it. That isn't far from the truth. Yes, Train Kun claimed another victim and isekai'd you. No, I'm kidding. Cursed phone, it would work! Where am I? Seems like I'm in the forest. Last I heard, we were south of Rotterdam. That's to the south, right? Uh, if only Big Brother were his here to tell me. Oh, a house. Finally, some good in this dreadful situation. A luxurious yet imposing. I'd have to cross the forest first. If I follow the tracks, no. That would be too long. And who knows what's out there? At least if I reach the manor, I could ask for help and... Maybe even find a way to call my siblings. It would help to find out where they are. Very well. Of course, through the forest. A lot has happened and I'm worried. But I can't let that stop me now. After all, once you reach rock bottom, the only way to go is up. Yeah, I put in this sort of line and thinking because that's really how he ha had managed to get all his like wealth and, you know, remain prominent. Especially since he's such a tiny country that's been, like, dragged around by all his neighbors in history. Okay, so yeah. I use custom scripts so that every time he takes a step, it says a sound. I just thought I would add some nice, like, ambience. So, you can choose to take the red herb or not. A few ink ribbons have been abandoned in the grass. And yes, definitely pick those up. It actually, The game requires you to take them because those are your save points. Will you take the green herb? Yep. It's actually set on an RNG. Like, there's a random variables involved. And what sort of item you'd get. Just thought it would add to the tension. A combat knife is stabbed into the tree stump. It seems like it can still be used. Yes. A knife! I suppose taking this wouldn't hurt. No one else is using it and this may come in handy. Would you like to see the tutorial? I know how to use it, but yeah. The main menu is now accessible. Simply press the X key to open it and feel your health status, weapons, and items. To equip a weapon, select item. Pick the slot which con contains your chosen weapon, then select equip in the options that pop up. Your currently equipped weapon will show up in the menu window to the right. You can also select the weapons item slot and choose to unequip the weapon. Oh, there's Belgium. Except we're not using her right now. To use a weapon, hold down the shift key and use the directional keys to determine where to aim your weapon. Then when you're ready, press the spacebar key to attack. So it's shift plus spacebar. Keep in mind that while attacking, you cannot move. So yeah, you do have a means of fighting back, but it's pretty limited. So it's not a, it doesn't make you feel much more powerful than you already are. 
And yeah, figured since most RPG Maker game players aren't used to this sort of system, a tutorial would be helpful. And okay, when I was spreading these animations, I used a sprite. Um, it's a paid program for, you know, making sprites and pixel art. But it's like a one-time payment, so... You can invest in it if you think it'll really help help you. But I used Medibang before that. There was already in the original Resident Evil custom script tutorial. They had a VXA styled sprite swinging a knife. So I took some from that and then followed the sprite's patterns to make a convincing looking knife slashing animation. Woo. Go down the hill. Would you like to see the save room tutorial? Yep. In this game, you can only save via the save room. You can find save rooms scattered throughout the area. Every save room has a typewriter that you can record your progress with, as long as you have an ink ribbon. Ink ribbons aren't always easy to come by, so spend them wisely. Ink ribbons are a mechanic that existed in Resident Evil. So here you can store items that you don't need. To be honest, I, I'm not sure why they had the rabbit herb when you... It just does this, the same thing as the green herb, sort of. And you can see it right here. It's also a good way to see like which route you're going with. So like here it says Netherlands. E. And yeah, there's save rooms. It has like that sort of relaxing yet eerie theme. And at least no zombies will get to you there, am I right? <laughs> as long as the barrel's sturdy, it won't budge. It looks fragile. Perhaps it can be broken with just the right force. So yeah, barrels. To break it, you're gonna have to slash the fuck out of it because game logic. And also because I just wanted a way for the player to be, to get used to the mechanics without being in danger of dying. Put a good bit of practice in. And now it's gone. But yeah, kind of glitchy there. Can take blue herb. Actually, blue herb's gonna be useless as of now. So I'll just store that here. Blue herbs treat poison. Actually, let me go through the menu right now. So you can examine an item. So it's telling you it's a roll of typewriter ribbon. You can. Well, you can't combine these ribbons. You can discard it, though I wouldn't advise it for this type of item. It's a rare. Can restore vitality. Enhances green herb effects. And it's a knife! Standard combat knife could be dangerous in right hands. File is... Well, you can't use it right now. It's for when you find something to read and oh god, the barrels moved. They're cursed. No, nah, just kidding. Obviously, it's just so they don't. Oh gosh, I forgot to um do a self switch on that thing. Oh well. The ability to sprint has now been enabled. Would you like to see the sprinting tutorial? Sprinting will help you move quicker, whether it will be from enemies or to save time. Press and hold down the A key to sprint. Be sure to watch your stamina bar to see if you have enough energy to sprint. When you lose all of your stamina, each second that you run will result in losing health. By that point, it's up for you to decide if the risk is worth it. Yeah, so if you press A instead of shift because shift is for holding the weapon, you get this nifty stamina bar. 
I actually changed it from the original stamina bar from the demo because <laughs> when one of my friends played it, it turns out there was a glitch in which you could just repeatedly tap A. <laughs> oh god, we got the big mixed herbs. We're lucky today, boys and girls and Arakain. <laughs> okay, so it's full of thorns, can be cut aside. Oh, so I think, yeah, this sort of stamina bar script is actually useful in that it can disappear at any time. So let's see what happens if we try to run too much. Yeah, you start losing health. Yeah, he's still okay, but yeah, we can heal him right now just to be safe. But yeah, he has... Luxembourg is the one with the most stamina. So if you're the kind that wants to run away, or at least rush through things, he would probably be your best candidate. This place would be nice and relaxing if it wasn't for that ominous bloodstain and those creepy vines. Yep. I actually based those vines off of the real life plant called Daughter, which is actually parasitic in real life. Obviously, it doesn't have any ties to making zombies, but just thought it'd be interesting, you know. I would end up getting stuck in that pile of vines or trip over them. I should use this knife to clear the path. Or you could climb! No, I'm kidding. But yeah. Just gotta clear the path. Wow, a perfect clean cut. And yeah, as you notice, there's no fade in the transitions between maps. That is because I wanted it to be like the sort of, I don't know, fixed camera angles, the fixed camera angle style that you'd see in those old survival horrors, where you run from one area of the map to the next, all of a sudden, but it's at one angle. Also less headache that way. <laughs> where did all of this blood come from? <laughs> this isn't good. Yep, not good, Lux. You're, you're about to get fucked. <laughs> Not literally, but you know, metaphorically, of course. Okay. Yeah. So what exactly left these things? Hmm. It'd be interesting to know. Okay, where is the freaking... Okay, there. Yeah, freedom, bitch! Okay. Oh. Now I'm gonna go back here. So yeah, these sorts of these sorts of maps, um the background is actually I sort of painted that on well, I used blurry versions of the tree tile sets and then painted some extra stuff on there with clip studio paint. And it's actually on the tile set layer, right above the water tile set layer to get that nice effect. And yeah, all these maps are parallax style. I just think it's more interesting and custom made that way. You know, much more freedom, but it does take lots of work. So yeah. Oh gosh. So let's go up here. Oof. Person dead. What killed her? This is madness. What is going on? 
Mm -hmm. uh, the art style, well, it was inspired by Genji Ito manga. I need to be to the house as soon as possible. So yeah, it's inspired by Junji Ito manga. My usual style is I color the lines. The way I the lines are colored in this style is black. To sort of give that sort of manga-ish feel. But I also want that color too, so... Yeah. More scary that way. Can you interact with her again? The corpse of a woman has been tied to the trunk of the large tree. Mm. Uh, yeah. I mean, I put in flowers because, you know, why not? <laughs> it looks cool. <laughs> and I put in a, this freaking rock puzzle last minute. I probably will put in a different sort of puzzle because... Yeah, this was rushed. I just wanted there to be like some window of time between the discovery and the next scene so that you could listen to this spooky tension bringing music, which was made by Apocalyptica. Hmm. Yeah, red ambiance. Is that a friend or a foe? If it's the latter. I hope that my knife-wielding and throwing skills haven't gone rusty. I didn't practice for a while. Hello? Oh yeah, that's also 28 Days Later music. Luxembourg raises his knife. Muscle memory kicking in. He's gone by using charisma and what's not combat or strength. For the first time in a while. Luxembourg. Feels helpless. Because as we remember, Luxembourg is a guy that really revels in like the success and the wealth he's gotten because he wants to be as awesome and impressive as his brother, his siblings, really. And he works hard. He continues to work hard. But now all of that is out the window. Business skills isn't going to help him through this freaking situation so he really feels like a fish out of water here and I really wanted to emphasize that in his narrative anyway hello hello placeholder zombie <laughs> I'll get out and find my family no matter what it takes so yeah <laughs> yeah if it isn't clear the vines are growing out of the gap in his jaw Oh, his eyes are supposed to be like black sclera and red pupils. But you know, I, I didn't have enough time to color it properly before I had to do this. Hey, at least this dude can run fast. So let's see what happens if he touches me. Okay. So if you face him, you're gonna get hurt. Probably not hurt that much. Because he's literally just- Okay, now you gotta be worried. At the very least, we have mixed herbs to heal him. Okay. Die, motherfucker! Oh my gosh! Stop freaking dodging me! <laughs> yeah, I need- I uh, wish I could polish off this AI. I literally just have him on a follow player event. An event touch. Which apparently isn't fully reliable. Okay, now he's dead. How long has it been since I've last killed someone? I don't even remember. I know there was no other choice, but this awful feeling won't subside. Well, shit, man. Oh. <laughs> you glitched it. Okay. So yeah, that was Luxembourg's route. So far, I did want to polish things up before the official demo release, so look out for that. And yeah, hope you all have a good day.
maybe check out the other two routes if you want. And yeah. So now we are going to pick, I believe, Belgium this time. Evening, July 20XX, aboard a train to the Gare du Nord. Ah, summer truly is a time for nostalgia. Oh yeah, and this time Belgium is gonna is the pro tag if you choose her. Well, the pro tag for this first scenario. So yeah, my plan is for th there to be three sorts of scenarios that they're each of the siblings are stuck in, and after you've played through each one, then the true final ending happens. But the order in which you pick them determines where they'll end up. I remember the times I visited the coasts of Spain's house with Big Brother and Romano. Oh, he was so young back then. I suppose family vacations always brings that mood. Speaking of vacations, I wonder how Romano and Spain are right now. <laughs> Romano. <laughs> Last I heard, they visited Flanders with Portugal. And we're planning on going to Big Brother's house. So, I don't know. Only thing I remember about Flanders is that there's like one depressing story like that happens to take place in it about this boy and his dog. <laughs> and done! With that document emailed, my boss should be fine. I'm free! Ah, oh, look at you. My little brother's such a hard worker. I'm so proud. Yep. No. <laughs> so, to be honest, it's the first time we've got to have a vacation here in a while. Well, together. <laughs> I made a face that's 200 pixels by 200 pixels. Originally, I wanted them to be fitting inside of the text box, but then I decided to use a script. I think it's Galv's bust script. Script? Because, I don't know, it just didn't seem to show all the details that well. Either if I just stuck with the default size. After having to stay in for last Halloween again, the workload's been driving me crazy. I keep telling you, you should delegate tasks and take some more time for yourself. So, unlike her brothers, who are willing to do business no matter what, Belgium is the kind who's more concerned for them and, like, you know, their well being. Like, she is also good at business skills, but at least she spent her childhood in a more rich status. Though she did struggle a lot as well, because she and Luxembourg, they were in this rough spot, and that's how Luxembourg had the idea to make money to become powerful. And then Belgium's like, no! I doubt that the best business decisions could be made if you're running yourself into the ground. Big sister, I'm fine. Don't need to worry. Besides, we need you to show the way to your neighbor's best destinations in not only Paris, but also the countryside. Of course, I made sure to research ahead of time to find places that the two of you would like. So knowing Netherlands, you likely tried to sell expensive products to France again. We were just wondering what you think of this trip, Big Brother. Yeah, so Belgium and Ned, compared to Belgium and Lux, their relationship is a bit more strained, especially that one time Netherlands, I don't know, tried unifying with Belgium, it didn't work out. <laughs> and of course Belgium's like concerned about Ned's stinginess. Me? I think it'll be nice. I'll get to see what commodities are trending in France right now. Uh, even in vacation mode, he's still thinking about money. <laughs> uh, poor Belle. <laughs> Awkwardness. Uh, by the way, who are you texting? <laughs> the way that Belgium just approaches and then Luxembourg just rushes to him. 
The younger two eagerly look at Netherlands' phone screen and see a picture of Japan taking a selfie of himself alongside Pochi and Netherlands' rabbit. Oh, that's so adorable! You must be missing your rabbit already. I just wanted to see if Japan's adjusting well to caring for both his dog and Miffy. Oh, you worry too much. I'm sure that Miffy will be just fine. Speaking of photos, I have a new Polaroid camera. We should take a picture of ourselves. Ugh. Phones already have built-in cameras that work just fine. Why would you spend extra money on another camera? There is a difference between just fine and the best quality possible. Besides, I had some money. There'll be instant photos right away. We could put them in an album once we are done. Oh, great idea! <laughs> I could take a picture of the three of you if you'd like. Really? That would be great. So yeah, nice train passenger is nice. Smile for the camera. That means you too, Ned. Really? I think it's also kind of funny because like in a recent comic, Luxembourg was able to make Netherlands smile in the photo by paying him money for it. Like Ned was willing to do anything for money. <laughs> Wholesome. Did it come out okay? Uh, I always hate making backgrounds. So I just blurred it out and called it a day. So this more than amazing. Thank you very much. <laughs> Ned, you should keep it. I thought you would have wanted it. Yeah, but you are neat and organized. You hardly misplace anything, if at all. If you really want me to. Ah. Uh. The restroom's two carts ahead, right? Yes, it should be. Alright, see ya. Okay, I'm walking out of the train. To... To the loo. <laughs> yeah, original demo, they didn't have this fade out. I edited it in, so the transition felt less awkward. Belgium and Luxembourg continue to chat about multiple topics while waiting for their brother's return. He's been taking a while. It is likely his business, not ours. Maybe, but still. I'll just check up on him for a bit. I'll be back soon. Very well. So yeah, past this point is where their cutscenes begin to diverge. If you were to play as Luxembourg, you get his perspective of what was going on while she goes to Ned. If you were playing from Ned's perspective, you get to see what he encountered on his way over to the bathroom <laughs> and back. That'd be nice. He couldn't have gotten far. Yep. Just gonna continue. That woman could hurt herself. Is she okay? She... Um... Hello? Yes. <laughs> Not something you see every day. <laughs> uh, Ma'am, do you need help? Wait a second. Is that blood? Hey, you really shouldn't do that. <laughs> she just transitioned now. What? What are you? I need to get out of here. No! Bell, are you okay? I'm fine. We need to barricade the next cart. Just Ned flying in. <laughs> what happened? There's dangerous people back there. Absolutely no one should go through this door. And then everyone's like, what the fuck? It wouldn't happen to have anything to do with this, would it? Luxembourg pulls out his phone, the screen showing a news article with its title glaring disease outbreak in Finnish town reanimates the dead. Yay! 
Thanks, Finland. <laughs> I don't want to admit it, but maybe. So yeah, you're all probably wondering, how the fuck did an outbreak from Finland reach here to the Netherlands since there's an entire fucking ocean? Or like several countries in between. Well, I don't know. Let's just say that Finland's not the only place where what caused the outbreak could have been set free. Okay, here we go. Ah! Uh, oh god! And yep. To think that there would be zombies on the other side too! Not good. You need to leave the train. This way. Mm. Yep, just gonna rush right through here. Poor lady. Ned, what is this? I guess it's as good as yours. Okay. And now you're stuck trying to weave your way through all these- Oh, I'm stepping on his head. <laughs> Oh no. So yeah, just notice that the red tint gets bigger. I mean, more pronounced each time you go through. No matter where we go, there's just more of them. There has to be an exit somewhere. How can you be so calm about this? There's a time and enough place to freak out. I have to make sure you're both safe. Yeah. Oh yeah. I actually, um... What the? Since when did everything catch on fire? So... Oh my god, you two! Just fucking let me through! Ow. So... Yeah, the zombies... I actually took other people- other zombie sprites. They're credited. And I edited them myself to make it more bloody and terrifying. Things are getting worse. Is there any hope left? Focus, you two. We're almost out. Okay. Yeah, we gotta get out. Get out here. Get the fuck out. And yeah, like, for example, that zombie has its entire face seemingly hollowed out. <laughs> yep. You can never have too much fire. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure that jumping out is safe? Safer than going back there. Hurry! Okay. He's gonna jump. Bell, you too. Will I make it to the other side? Yes, you can. Believe in yourself. Believe in dreams come true. Bell, please. I'll go first and help you over. Here goes nothing. Oh, no! Big sister! No! Netherlands! Luxembourg! No, please! Don't leave me! Yep. <laughs> See what happens when you don't believe in yourself, Belgium? No, I'm kidding. Uh. It was an evening on July 20XX when dreams ended and the nightmare began. Bio-terror! Yay! <laughs> yeah, if... If I don't... Look like I'm freaking out that much, that's... That's just cause... I'm the dev that made this, so I know what happens. Normally in horror games, I'm much more scared. As you might have seen if you watched me play horror games in the past.
So yeah, what you heard was the train crashing. And her being thrown off. Ouch. That grass, did I die? Nation kind healing. There's always such a pain. Yeah, something I don't see, like, established too often in Hetalia games, where there's a risk of death, is that nations can heal. It's kind of confirmed from that one comic where Prussia, he, his bite wound from a dog didn't heal as fast as it would have when he was still a nation. Where am I? And if they do acknowledge it, it, there's usually like some sort of explanation for why it'd be still bad news if they get killed. It seems like I'm in the forest. Last I heard, we were south of Rotterdam. Where was that place again? I should have gotten better at navigating Big Brother's house. Eh, looks like there's a house over there. A residence? Of evil. <laughs> no. I'd like to cross the forest. Well, I'd have to cross the forest. <laughs> I'd have to cross the forest first. But I should at least warn them about what happened. I just hope it's that whoever's living there will have a way to help me find my brothers. They must be so worried. You think something warm to eat within there as well? Yeah. Chill up, Belgium. You can get through this. I hope. Aww. So yeah. So yeah, you have the choice to have a female pro tag for once in a Hitalia fan game. Well, it's already happened like a few times before, but you know. Nice touch. Yeah, let me think back. I think, yeah, Liechtenstein in, um, Hitalia Floor Orchestra. Um... I think Liechtenstein again? Or was it Belgium? I forgot. But it was Heta Geist that was full of the, you know, t the female nations. Seychelles' Journey starring Seychelles, of course. Hmm. There might be... S oh. Um. Oh, yeah. In the Bravely Hetalia demo and Bravely Hetalia. Although they were not the main character, they were in the main party, um, Seychelles... Hungary and Belarus. And End of Days also stars um, Y, or at least, I don't know, it would be spoilers, but Y. I think that's all I can think of for now. Tell me if there is any others I've missed. So yeah, nice walking ASMR. A few ink ribbons have been abandoned in the grass. Take those three. That's very important. That's your save item. And then, yeah, there's more of a danger factor because you can only save so much. So save scumming might be a bit tricky here. Though it shouldn't be too much of a problem in this demo for now. Combat knife is stabbed into a tree stump. Seems like it can still be used. Yas. Not sure how effective I'll be with this, but it's better than nothing. No. So yeah. Um, in the Luxembourg section of this video, you can see the tutorial, but yeah, I thought it'd be helpful to add it in because this isn't regular RPG Maker mechanics. When animating her sprite, I made sure to show like her hair moving as well. So wonderful. Better get ready for a bad time. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, I was trying to test to see what happened if you just tapped shift a lot while trying to walk. It just activates sticky keys. <laughs> Go down the hill. Yeah. Oh. Well, <laughs> that's rough. 
I don't I don't know about this tree. I'm sorry. But yeah. I'm hoping to add more flavor text. But yeah, here's a save room. Nice door opening thing. I know, uh, I thought just enlarging the door sprites was a better alternative and much faster than just drawing my own door graphics. Or making a script that allows you to zoom in on to a door. Okay, I'm making some good time here. Just gonna store that blue herb away. And yeah. Here's my shed. Beautiful. <laughs> so, actually the- I actually looked up on Google Maps like forest areas in the Netherlands. Like the southern Nether Netherlands. Just to see like what areas they could have possibly landed in in the train. Of course, I'm not- I'm no expert because I'm an American in European train routes, so I'm not sure if it really would land in the south of Rotterdam, but yeah. I actually looked at pictures from the areas I was inspired by. It's actually Zeeland. Um, there's a certain national park. Or was it a forest reserve? Yes. Um, in my notes it says that the forest area is based off of Sleeken van de Heen from St. Philip's Land Village and the Intelse Gorzen Nature Preserve. I don't know if I pronounced that correctly, but yeah, I, got, I looked at pictures from that area just to get some inspiration. I don't need blue herbs. <laughs> the ability to sprint has now been enabled. This time it's pressing A to sprint in lieu of pressing shift. She's the middle ground between Luxembourg and Netherlands when it comes to sprinting. I also inputted another sort of custom script so that you lose health each time you are overusing your sprint. So it's a viable option, but don't depend too hard on it. Okay. And then this is the section is like, well, alongside padding and like going through the quiet forest after all the shit that's transpired. It's a way for the player to just get some breeding room, be able to um, get familiar with the mechanics before they actually have to use it. You can also combine items together. That's very helpful because you have a limited amount of space. The blood isn't anything new. But what are those strange vines wrapped around some of these plants? They look familiar. I think England mentioned its name. Daughter? Yeah, daughter is actually a parasitic plant. And Belgium might know about it because, well, she's Belgium. And she, she might have been far, able to, like, farm with Spain w while living with him. That's a lot of vines. Well, good thing I have this trusty knife with me. Thank goodness for my gardening experience back when I was at Spain's house. Oh, wow. <laughs> I actually mentioned it. I mean, not sure if you would actually use a knife, but you know, whatever the fuck works. <laughs> so yeah, kind of freaky. I actually just drew all those with a pen tool on 
um, was it Clip Studio Paint? Yeah. Because this is actually a parallax map. So the water over there. Ooh, I'm at the edge. It's... Oh, fuck. <laughs> I'm just walking on the water. So the water over there is like the first layer. And then I think the ground layer right above it. That's a tile set layer above it. And then I also put in a script that is a multiple layers. So like you could add extra fog and lighting. Yeah. And yeah, I, I try not to be too gratuitous with the blood. But still have some signs that, you know, everything's going bad. What is this? I'm beginning to regret taking this past to the forest. Yep, Belgium, you, you're screwed. <laughs> Uh, nice scenery. Of course I'm saying this because I made it. <laughs> but still. This actually... I think these few maps was made within the last week of the jam. Because I was procrastinating way too hard. So, But at least now I know that about what I should prioritize in a jam. And that I got something playable out <laughs> for once. <laughs> okay, yep. And yay, blood trail. Well, I wonder what it leads to. Oh, yay. <laughs> okay. Actually, you can try to avoid her, but you're just going to be led back. Oh, horrible. How did this happen? I need to find Ned and Luxon fast. Yep. She did. <laughs> uh, this is bad news. Yeah, the art, the art style I'm going for is... Well, I went with black line art to make it seem more um gritty. And yeah, let's see if we can be prepared. Never mind. I only have one sort of herb. Better use it. Wait. Who's that? Yeah. I wanted to really hone in on the sound effects for this jam because I watched one video, I forgot what it was, but it was talking about how important sound was to create an effective horrific feeling, like a spooky feeling in horror. And yeah, so I decided to, if there's one thing I didn't want to skimp on, it was the sound effects. Wait, who's that? Please let it be a human. Uh, nope, you're not in luck. Stop it! Leave me alone! Belgium glances at her knife, internally debating on what to do. She's the friendly girl, the one with no special qualities. Is she truly capable of doing what it takes to survive? Okay, so Belgium here. Um, from what I've seen in the comics, like even amongst the other girls, she says that she feels plain. Well, amongst her neighbors, she feels plain. And... I guess I read this analysis post by Hebigami Okami 77 on DeviantArt about this character and how, you know, she's got two brothers with awesome financial and wealth skills. And like, she's just caught in the middle. Her confidence is sort of like wavering, but she is still nice and friendly no matter what. As we can see with how she treats Romano, how... 
she treats those around her. So yeah, I feel like this arc, if you pick her, is more about her finding her own strengths to continue to hold on to those qualities of her despite the hell that is happening. Yard. I actually sketched this image in a restaurant. <laughs> and then my brother, he saw it, he was like, you didn't make his arm right. So then I went back home and then fixed the arm. Thanks, bro. You can't hesitate. Not now. But yeah. Yeah. Okay, like, fade out. Th oh yeah, by the way, this is 28 Days Later music. I'm trying to see what did did he hurt her? Oh, I think he did damage her. Okay. Okay, we got him. So that wasn't meant to be way too hard. It, I thought I could be forgiving here. But in the original demo it was glitched. I put him on action button instead of event touch. I'm, just, I'm like, damn it! <laughs> and yeah, there's still some stuff I should get polished out, but you know, it's a zombie and you can kill it. <laughs> I I did it. At the very least, that body won't be used to kill anyone else. Yeah. Like, yeah, Belgium is the one with like. Lots of empathy. I guess there were some points within certain rulers of her history, but I like to think that yeah, she was she's the type to just be worried over those she cares for and those around her. And yeah, that was her route. So yeah, thanks for watching guys and check out the other routes if you wish. So see ya. Alright, so this time we are picking Netherlands. Yeah, I think Netherlands, he's the character that tends to get- oh, okay. Evening July 20XX, aboard a train to the Gare du Nord. And yeah, he's the character that gets the most types of, um, Natalia fan games out there made starring him. Like, I think there was Netherlands' quest. I thought that was cool. Um, there might have been a few others that I forgot about right now. So, yeah, let's go ahead. Everyone's going on trips right now. Last I heard, Den was going with the other Nordics to a town in Finland's house. Hmm. They brought those two Micronation kids, too. Okay, so this is actually a reference to the very first Hetali fan game idea I thought of that involves a zombie apocalypse. And yeah, with starring the Nordics and those Micronation kids, uh, Ladonia and Sealand. Uh, poor, poor boys. <laughs> At least they're having fun, not sitting in this quiet train. It's been nearly an hour. At this point, we should be approaching Belgium's house by now. Yeah, I'm not sure how long it takes to move from Amsterdam all the way to Paris, France. Uh, I saw, looked at a train itinerary, apparently it might take three hours in some occasions. So that's what I went with. Maybe I'll kill time by checking on Japan. Who knows what mischief Pochi got into with Michi Miffy. <laughs> oh yes, this is a reference to in the web comics. When Netherlands' rabbit started talking with Japan's dog. <laughs> it was kind of awkward but cute. Hey, I'm bored. I feel like Ned's the type to not like bother too much with proper punctuation when giving casual messages. 
But then Japan, on the other hand, is actually very, um, very punctual with his proper g grammar. Is that this a shame? You are still on the train? Yes. It'll be two more hours stuck over here. Oh my. What's about your family? I'm sure that they'd like to talk to you. At least from my experience. Family members tend to become chatterboxes when gathered together. Sometimes overwhelmingly so. Yeah, Japan's got a rowdy group of Asians neighboring with him. <laughs> like, his adoptive brother, China, is an example. And done! With that- <laughs> what was that voice? <laughs> that is not the voice I have for Luxembourg. And done! With that document emailed, my boss should be fine. I'm free! Ah, oh, look at you. My little boss is such a hard worker. I'm so proud. <laughs> and, uh, they're talking here, those two, but we're paying- Ned is paying attention to his conversation on the phone. They're preoccupied. I shouldn't interrupt them. <laughs> anyway, how's Miffy? She and Pochi are getting along. They were running in circles this afternoon. Ah. Uh, <laughs> Here's a picture to leave you of your photo. Netherlands sees Japan's photo, a selfie that Japan took along with Pochi, and his rabbit Miffy. They look happy. Aw, oh, so sweet. Huh. It's actually kind of nice. And yeah, <laughs> he's actually smiling here. It's cute. Actually, that's that's sort of half smiles based off of the webcomic also. It worked. I owe you two lips. The, the, the knowing Netherlands, he likely tried to spell expen- did I say spell again? F he likely tried to sell expensive products to France again. Hmm? Who is just wondering what you think of this trip, Big Brother? Wait, what do I say? Them excited? Did I miss them a lot and want to connect with them more during this trip? Yeah, because yeah, Ned doesn't really wear his emotions on his sleeve. But you can tell he does care for them. <laughs> To an extent. Like he's worried about Luxembourg following his example and he d did express distress at Belgium not getting along with him <laughs> when he visited Japan. Hmm, maybe I should start with something less happy and full of baggage than that. Yeah, because they- at least with Belgium he's got quite some history. Me? I think it'll be nice. Get to see what commodities are trending in France right now. <laughs> Oof. By the way, are you texting? <laughs> Nerd. The younger two eagerly look at Netherlands' phone screen and see Japan's photo. Ah, that's so adorable! You must be missing your rabbit already. I just wanted to see if Japan's adjusting well to caring for both his dog and Miffy. Oh yeah, um, sort of fun fact. I came up with this dialogue by typing it directly into the events, cutscenes. Instead of, you know, usually what I do is type it out on a Word document before I copy and paste onto the game. That was because of time constraints. <laughs> You worry too much. I'm sure that Miffy will be just fine. Speaking of photos, I have a new Polaroid camera. We should take a picture of ourselves. Ugh. Phones already have built-in cameras that work just fine. Why would you spend extra money on another camera? <laughs> yeah, Ned the cheapskate. There's a difference between just fine and the best quality possible. Besides, I had the money and there would be instant photos right away. We could put them in an album once we are done. Best quality? Back then I was grateful for any quality. Oh yeah. Back in my day, times were tough. I had to shovel out dirt. 
You don't understand, little brother. You weren't there those centuries ago. But yeah, I think Ned's the type to, like, want to work hard so that his siblings wouldn't have to. Because he's the biggest. He'd have this. Not a great idea. What if it's for the sake of sentimentality? Suppose it wouldn't hurt. Yay. I could take a picture of the three of you if you'd like. Really? That would be great. Smile for the camera. That means you too, Ned. Really? You... I hope my smile doesn't end up being too awkward. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't say too much, so... In his thoughts, I want to put in what he was really thinking. <laughs> Aw. Did it come out okay? That is more than amazing. Thank you very much. Yay! Ned, you should keep it. I thought you would have wanted it. Yeah, but you are neat and organized. You hardly misplace anything if at all. You really want me to. Yep, your your cherished sibling memories. It's not professional. Photo shoot quality. But this is priceless. Ah. <laughs> okay. Uh, that reminds me. My family and I recently went had like a photo shoot. Well, a couple of our family friends were the ones who took the photo. They took the photos with my digital camera. There were several that came out nice. The restroom's two cards ahead, right? Yes, it should be. All right. See ya. You see, nature calls. <laughs> Ned's just going out to the bathroom right after the photo. Oh. Huh? Okay. What sort of drugs is she on? <laughs> I don't know what she'd do if I interrupt, so hopefully it'll wear off on its own. Yeah. I mean, okay, that sort of scene is inspired by the beginning of Bird Box. At least in the hospital, where you see the first signs of, like, the crazy epidemic thing happening. Where the unseeable creatures drive people to madness. Well, that's over and done with. Time to go back. <whistles> it's done. Probably calling to talk my ear off about that Swede dunking him in the river again. <laughs> uh, Swede. Hello? Ned! Oh, thank goodness! I am Cannon, they're actually buddies. Like, Ned gives him a discount. Knowing Ned, that means a lot. <laughs> what happened? You clearly sound panicked. Look, you have to promise me that you won't freak out or call me crazy or anything like that, okay? You're my buddy and I really value your friendship. I'm being the most honest I can be right now. Fine, I promise. Now what is it? Remember that town in Finland's house? It's turning to shambles! Some outbreak must have happened or something because there's zombies all over the place attacking everybody! Did you drink too many beers again? Enough to make you see zombies? You said you wouldn't call me crazy! That's a tall order, Den. No idiot in real life would try to make a zombie virus and succeed at it. Then I guess we were hoping for too much, huh? Look, this whole thing's likely to spread it over all of Europe. Take your family and get out. Maybe Indonesia or Japan's place would do. Just run before it gets worse. Yeah, Indonesia because... Well, we colonized Indonesia in the past. And Japan because he's an island. <laughs> And a friend. I'm just going to hang out right now. Call me when you're sober. Yeah. Oh. Bill? He tried to warn you. Bill, are you okay? I'm fine. We need to barricade the next cart. Ah, Ron. Oh no. What happened? There's dangerous people back there. 
Absolutely no one should go through this door! Oh no! What happened to have anything to do with this with it? Luxembourg pulls out his phone. The green... The screen! Ugh, it's too late for me, sorry. Showing a news article with its title glaring. Disease outbreak in Finnish town reanimates the dead. I don't want to admit it, but maybe... Yeah. Oof. Oh! Oh god! Just moving slowly as he steps. Okay. Not good. We need to leave the train. This way. And yeah, they just teleported right in front of them. Ah, I feel bad. Yeah, you can't save or sprint because this is still the prologue. And what is this? I guess it's as good as yours. I don't like how in Last of Us you get to see like the main guy and his daughter as the apocalypse begins. No matter where we go, there's just more of them. There has to be an exit somewhere. How can he be so calm about this? There's a time and a place to freak out. I have to make sure you're both safe. Yeah, Ned's a no-nonsense type of guy. What the? Since when did everything get on fire? Oh god. Oh, for uh, luck. Alright. Things are getting less. Is there any hope left? Focus, you two. We're almost out. Oh. As you can see, it's only zombies in this car. Ah, the humans. Be dead. You two go first. He says that jumping out is safe. Safer than going back there. Oh, you're next. Will I make it to the other side? Yes, you can believe in yourself. Well, please. Ned, over here! Take my hand! You see, I feel like this is a likely, a more likely scenario that Ned would let his younger two go first. Coming! Big Brother! No! Well, we have to go back! Bell! No, I'll be fine. Just hold on and stay together. I'll find my way back, I swear! I'm sorry. Mm. And you didn't even tell them how much you love them. It was an evening on July 20xx when dreams ended and a nightmare began. Bio terror. Title drop. I mean... Yeah, I got the sound effects from freesound.org. Well, that's one of them. At least. The sources. Ah, 
ever get used to dying in this nation's body. I want to just lie down for a while. But I should suck it up if I want to get out of here. Mm -hmm. Where is this again? No. The way his scarf is just swishing. I look at... By the looks of it, I'm in the Zeeland province. Blah, blah. I'm in the Zeeland province. So this is still my house. Hmm. Looks like there's a manor over there. Judging by the lights, there's still someone living there. So yeah, it's... Actually, the first Resident Evil involves a manor. It takes place in the manor. But this isn't... It's not gonna be the exact same as like the Spencer mansion. I wanted to put my own spin on it. Plus it's in the Netherlands instead of the US. So but shall I go that way? The forest reserve is uncertain. There's train tracks that I could follow to find Luke's and Bell. From the tracks, the nearest town's going to take a while. And it's the last place I'd want to be in this situation. At least if I go to the manor, I can ask its residents for help. Maybe even bargain for supplies. My biggest priority is finding my family. The rest, we'll figure out together. Nothing like trying to find your family in the zombie apocalypse. Combat knife is stabbed into a tree stump. Seems like it can still be used. Take it. I can make this work. Yeah, and you can see a tutorial on Lux's route, but here's the menu. Actually, this is based. This is from a custom, a set of custom scripts by. Let me see if I have the credits here. By R underscore Valkyrie. And yeah, it's really cool looking and faithful to the original sorts of menus that the classic games had. See, Ned can like slash with his knife. <laughs> and later on, he can also fire a gun, but unfortunately, we didn't. I didn't reach this that point in the demo. But yeah, I did animate the sprite for him firing a, a Glock. <laughs> a few ink ribbons have been abandoned in the grass. Yeah. And that's what you need. So yeah, here is the entrance to the forest. We are going to go into the shed. Whew. I don't know. Guys, are your sheds this big? <laughs> Probably not. It seems we got everything we need here. That save. But yeah. Check out my door opening. Yeah. Like those classic art Resident Evil games. Sweet. And yep, the barrel won't budge unless if you break it with the knife because game logic, am I right? <laughs> And you can combine this with this. Oh shit. <laughs> I caused a glitch. The ability to sprint has now been enabled. And you press A to sprint. This is a different script than what I originally used in the demo. And I think it works much better. Like, you lose some of the graphic style, but the functionality is way more worth it. Yeah. 
Yeah. You can slash and go through all these bushes. Mm. I mean, I feel like a real forest path wouldn't be this... Have this much debris blocking the way, but... You know, it's... I try to make it... Try, I try to make it as natural as it could. <laughs> hmm. I couldn't recognize those parasitic vines anywhere. Kuskuda, or what most people like to call it, daughter. Strangely frequent in this area. Uh, oops, got a glitch there. But yes, Ned would be the type to know exactly what type of plant is over there. Because, you know... He got his tulips. He a gardener. Really? I can't combine this with this. Could I combine this with this? No. Well, that's a shame. Whoever's in charge of maintaining this forest trail should get a reprimanding. How's anyone supposed to go past these vines? I don't have gardening shears, but this knife should do. <laughs> I've just cut through the weird-ass vines that are totally just growing naturally and wasn't caused by anything else. <laughs> and just looking out into the lake. Mm. So I feel like, um, at least me trying to go for a fixed angle sort of look by making smaller maps really help to my advantage. Because unlike the last gem that I was in before this one, I got to focus more on the quality rather than like the quantity because I wouldn't have to stay up super late making areas and maps that people likely wouldn't even cross over because of the sheer size. That is a concerning amount of blood. But yeah. Oof. And yeah, Ned, he's got the worst stamina of the siblings. Um, because, like, each of them should have their own, like, drawbacks, but also their own strengths that... Depending on what kind of player you are, you can capitalize on. Uh, but in-game reason, maybe it's because he smokes. <laughs> but, you know, he's still a badass. And yeah, the multiple lighting layers script. Kind of makes it weird when you're first transitioning across maps, but... <laughs> Sorry, okay, I'll stop. Okay, time to cut through this. Okay, originally there was like a third square you have to cut through, but it was literally just two vines. So that would have been kind of annoying. Yeah, there's the ever so nice blood trail that totally wasn't there for any ominous reason. Yeah, I have enough slots. Let's see. Hmm. And I think this is the only map I have that allows for some sort of movement other than the train one. But as you can see, it just goes up and down, not like left or right. To still have that fixed camera angle feel. Hmm. <gasps> that smell! What's that wrapped around her tendril? Something tells me that I... Shouldn't stick around for too long. Yeah, actually, 
each of the siblings' reaction to this is one of the first lines of dialogue and thought that I wrote down. Just to get a feel of like the differences between each of them and how they'd react. So, for example, Ned, in comparison, he's less likely to get phased by like, oh no, what a horrible thing to happen. But more like paying attention to the current objective fact of the surrounding, like, it's stanky, man. <laughs> Because of, you know, he's the more of a fighter, in, at least in the webcomics that we've seen. Alright, let's go up. Wait. Something's there. Whoever's out there, come out now! Netherland stands at the ready with his knife, knowing to be prepared for anything. All this life he's had to fight. This is no different. Except the foe that he faces is a type that he's never considered to exist until today. So yeah, Netherlands. You can tell that he's had a rough go at it from the beginning. At least at his child self, we saw that he had to work hard in the field. He wasn't the richest, but then he went to Belgium's house so how nice and rich everything was. And he was like, I want that. And then he worked hard to obtain what he has now. And he doesn't want to let that go. And he's also like ha gone to conflicts against Spain, against his sister. And he's just very a very hardened individual. But the truth is, he is pretty caring and soft inside. Like one example. He helps lift up Romano when he's... He helps lift up Spain when Romano's trying to carry him. So that Romano can feel more strong and macho and happy. <laughs> and yeah, I think... At least for him... I don't know. The arc I have... Feels like... Can't divulge too many details, but... His main priority is like... Finding his family above all else, no matter what happens to him. And yeah, his stinginess might come back to bite him. But we'll see. Come at me! You overgrown! <laughs> I- <laughs> Oh gosh, I dare feel like I- Come at me, you overgrown fuckweed! <laughs> so yeah. I think I was sleep deprived while I was <laughs> typing up this freaking line. And I was like, hmm, what's a good thing that Ned would say? Um, oh yeah, this would be fun. Because he ain't scared. He's like, no, fuck you. I'm gonna stab you, little shit. I'm a tank. <laughs> what's done is done. But I still have a long road to go. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, that was Ned's route. You know, man, a few words, but fierce. Like, you know, compared to the other two, I feel like I was going for a bit more of the action hero y vibes, like action horror. Sort of like Leon Kennedy in Resident Evil 4. Like, he's got some experience. But he's still thrust into, like, a harrowing situation that he's got to snark and fight his way through. So yeah, that was all of Vile Terror that we have so far. Um, I did sketch out a layout of the complete forest area. I did also sketch out a, at least a map layout of the mansion. I uh, still have to think of the puzzles and the dialogue. But I kind of know where I'm going, at least towards, at least at the mansion part. But yeah, that should come in future updates that hopefully I can share through more videos. So yeah, that was Bioterror, and thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you all in the next game. Bye!